coming up on this episode of In Your Mind. Um, so for me, I've always been a huge fan of allowing and unfolding, you know, with Good. whatever that interests you. I, I really feel like if you can follow that joy of like, you know, being so curious and so like interested in something, it has to be a part of your path. Welcome to another episode of In Your Mind with your host, me, Paul Trudell Payne. And I am so excited to bring this next guest here. Um, I just got introduced to her, already am in love. Like, please help me welcome Yuri. Yuri, how are you? Hi. Oh my gosh, I'm so good. Thank you so much for having me here. And thank you, Eric, for introducing <laughs> us. Eric Swanson from Habitude Warrior. And um, yeah, it's an honor to be here in front of your audience. Oh my God. I'm super stoked to have you. Like you have the best energy. Like oh, so good. You. So good. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I changed things up a little just recently, like four or five episodes, which no one knows because those are not even out. But sure. <laughs> um, I started doing this thing. I was taking everybody and being like, Hey, what's, what do you do? I'll do this quick title. And then I realized I'm making you do a title in like three words. You're every person I have on this show their job is like way beyond those three words right. so now I'm starting every show off with you tell us a little bit about what it is you do what's your impact sort of how you are changing the world because that's who is coming on the show is people that are making big things so yeah. I'll let you go Thank you. So my yeah. name is Yuri Choi and I am a mindset coach. So we're performance and fulfillment coach. And I work with entrepreneurs and high performers. And really uh, my vision for the world is um, a place where we all lead with love. And that for me stands for L, laughter, oneness for O, vulnerability for V and E for E. So I just see this world full of joy and, you know, in whatever way I can actually, you know, uh, bring people to that vision, I'm excited about. So obviously my coaching business is one of the ways that I serve my clients and I've seen some amazing results that way. And um, I also write, um, mm -hmm. I, you know, create content. Um, I love connecting people. I mean, all of those things. So in any way possible towards that vision is what lights me up in this world. Love, love, love that. Okay. Well, now we get to go deep diving. Are you ready? Yes, I think okay. so. Am I ready? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I, think ready. I know I, you're ready. I promise you're ready. I start everybody with the same question. And um, so we'll go straight into it. I just think we always start every story from the beginning. So I want to know a little bit about Yuri as a little girl. Mm, my little inner child. Yeah. Wow, Yuri as a little girl. Um, you know, since I was like four years old, I remember ending all my little journal entries in Korean, by the way, I was born in Korea. Um, <laughs> would be like, oh, I just want this world to be a happier world. And yeah. I just always had this like idea <laughs> that this world gets to be, um, you know, a place full of happy people. And um, yeah, so that's really what I was about. And I, if I did everything as a child. I, I had a very creative mind. And I still do, you know, I still paint, I write poetry, I do spoken poetry, I'll write, I'll, you know, play songs, music, whatever. So any creative outlet I appreciate. Um, and I remember even as a young child, I used to play like, you know, um, what's it called? Like the Power Rangers. And like, I make up games with my cousins. I make up like, you know, playing bank, like who plays bank? I play school and like, I would just play all these roles for fun. And I just, you know, got to try on these different identities. And um, I had so much fun that way. So as a little girl, I was just really creative. And um, I, I don't think there's that much different <laughs> than yeah. what you're seeing right now, to be honest. So yeah. <laughs> is, I love that. I I love that. I did that same, like, seriously, same thing. Like, did you? Um, for sure. Like, a Power <laughs> Rangers, uh, Bank. I mean, like, and, Bank? And, you play Bank? Yeah, oh my yeah. God, that's new for me. I've yeah, never like, heard anyone no, else. I've played Bank. I played Doctor, <laughs> but not Doctor in like what the movie showed, like a real Doctor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, like, I mean, yeah, I, I felt that same way. I, there was something about being able to try out 
it's like almost like you get to try out this life or this person mm -hmm. like right like you get to play this thing um and I just love it like I love that idea of like trying everything that you can try yeah. and which actually I, it's hard because I've never really talked to anybody who did so many or even now does so many things uh, how did you justify that for yourself because I feel like what I at least what I encountered is everyone telling me like focus on one mm -hmm. right like you can only do one thing or you're not going to be good at any of them yeah which I didn't do not believe is true but still how did you yeah. reconcile that with yourself yeah you know I will say you know in the beginning of my coaching um business I do remember like okay here you have to hyper focus and you know I I sort of did and I, I get it and though like for me I have always been kind of um, you know, I've had so many different interests and passions all the time. Like even in college, like I couldn't decide between business marketing or psychology. And like after two years of going back and forth, I'm like, I'll do that. I'll do it both. So I just did both. And I actually mm -hmm. excelled at both because I did both. And so, and then I got to, you know, make all these connections that I would have never had if I had just done one or the other. I'm like, wow, mm. psychology applies here in business marketing and then vice versa. So, um, you know, I get it like from, um, from business standpoint, when we start, just so people can remember you, because I think, you know, humans have like the attention span of like eight seconds or something. Yeah. So, you know, just so that they can remember you, I get that. And though, remember, that's just like one of the many hats that you can wear. And you can, you know, wear that hat so that people can be like, oh, that's Yuri with the, you know, um, uh, you know, mindset coach hat. And though we all know that she has all these other hats that she can try on if she wanted to. Um, so for me, I've always been a huge fan of allowing and unfolding, you know, with whatever that interests you. I, I really feel like if you can follow that joy of like, you know, being so curious and so like interested in something it has to be a part of your path. So while you can focus on one thing, I think it's so important to continue to expand and follow that joy and follow that passion. Actually, that's one of the things I talk about um, in the book that is being published this year. And I talk about how, in fact, having all these different identities, like different social identities, allowed me to be more resilient because mm -hmm. it's like, playing Zen guy, right? You know, that block game. Yeah, if yeah. You pull one out, you know, you're not going to crumble altogether. Um, mm -hmm. And that only happened because I did follow my joy. I did follow, you know, all these little to big interests that I had. So, you know, for example, when my dad passed away, my daughter block came out, but I had all these other identities that could support me and still feel safe and resilient and, you know, still be grounded in that, if that makes sense. So it does. That's beautiful. Yeah. When did you move from Korea to U.S.? So I moved here when I was 11. Oh, cool. Yeah. How, how was that transition, like, from Korea to here? It was weird. <laughs> was it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was weird. Um, you know, I, when I was in Korea, I was very, very social. I was, I had, like, you know, so many friends, and I was, like, the class president, and, you know, <laughs> da, 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 da. And then I come here, and all of a sudden, I'm mute, and I'm deaf. Mm. You know, I can't understand anything. I can't speak a word. And so it was really weird, you know, especially at that age, 11, you know, it's a yeah. new age being like, wow, like I feel very invisible. I feel like I can't make friends. So I remember my first summer here, um, I was just like over it. I'm like, I, I, I got to speak this language or else I'm going to miss out on so much. Mm. So I remember um, that first summer here, I read 30 books in English in a language I didn't know. <laughs> and I was just like so determined um, so, you know, in that time I got to like test, like, okay, like I, I know how to like break through different things by taking massive action, but you know, it came with a lot of little to big, um, hurdles for sure during that time. But yeah. I think it really, you know, it was a time that really made me who I am today, obviously every step of the way. So it was weird, and, but you know, I'm glad I did it. And your family, immediate family, I'm assuming then they're here or is there still family back home? Yeah, so actually all my family as of like a year and a half ago now are oh my gosh. back home. Yeah, wow. so my mom and my stepdad used to live out here, but, you know, um, my mom actually just moved back like a year and a half ago. Uh, so yeah, I'm the only one here. And it's oh kind gosh. of interesting because with this whole, you know, 
COVID thing. Like I'm not even able to like go back really. I can, but there's so many restrictions. So yeah, just really playing out my independence. (laughs) Wow. That is amazing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I, um, I, when we talked before, I was, uh, we were talking about, I think it was like your last name. You were like, remember, say it this way. And I was saying like, oh, thank God. The one time that I can say names because I'm uh, in Seattle, there's a large uh, Asian population. And so like, the, I'm real good with obviously Spanish, Mexican, <laughs> and then I'm good, thank God, with uh, like most like Asian last names, especially just because I'm so used to yeah, it. Yeah, so honored. Um, <laughs> And there, it's like, that's how you're influenced, right? It's like who you grew up with and who you're around. So like, for me, it was, it was, it was a lot of, when I was younger, every person I knew was Mexican. I mean, Mm -hmm. I I remember, and this is actually embarrassing, but I I was like 12, 13, and I got to go to New York. My best friend had moved. She's Puerto Rican. She moved um, back to the East Coast. And I got to like stay with them for the summer. And I was so just like, this is where I grew up that I just assumed then if you are Hispanic or Latin, then you're Mexican, because that's where I grew up. Mm, yeah. So like, I was like, oh, cool, cool. Like, yeah, let's go hang out. Even though I knew she was Puerto Rican, which makes me sound even stupider. Um, but <laughs> like, so, and in New York, you cannot, I'm telling you, like the minute you call someone, oh, you're Mexican, no, they're Dominican or they're Venezuelan or they're Colombian or it was like some people put me in my place left and wow. right, uh, nice. which I loved though. Cause I was like, I would never, I literally would have like gone into adulthood thinking that just everybody is Mexican because we're Hispanic. And it's, it's a weird thought. Cause I know we're all from different countries, but that's mm-hmm. how my head related it. Right. Yeah. So growing up we, and then I moved to Seattle, a lot of Asian um, influence there. There's a little bit of Hispanic, not a lot. It's mostly just white, Asian, some black. And then I, in my childhood, it's a very, it was a migrant town. Like everybody there worked in the fields. And so it was like our Dairy Queen also sold burritos. You know what I mean? Like it was very Hispanic. <laughs> um, yeah. 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 So when the other thing we had though, it was in Washington state and it was built on a reservation. So we also had like Native American. I, again, I'm the Zana Ivan. Not until I was an adult, an adult, when I moved to Seattle, did I not, because we say Indian, like that was an Indian person in, mm-hmm. where I grew up. I didn't even know, think to myself, if you're from India, you're also an Indian. <laughs> like that's how crazy I am and how like small minded it is. And the reason I bring it up is like, I love, first of all, that you're from another country. That's mm-hmm. My family's all from another country. Um, I love hearing that story of like, you come here and you look at you now. I, I just think it's a beautiful thing that can happen. Um, with what everything is going on right now, on top of COVID, right? Everything, I just think like, it's important for people to know how different things are. And like, I think of even me, like that's close-minded, like that I would not know these other things. It's so crazy. Yeah. Um, but I, 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 and I like to say, and I think I've been more vocal lately about sharing those things mm-hmm. because I think like, I want someone to be like, okay, this happened to me, I should share, instead of feel worried that they're going to be, I don't know, judged or attacked or something. Like, it's okay. Like, we need to share what happened so that we can then now go to another place, right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, that's sort of a weird tangent that I went off of. Sorry, but it did connect no. in a little bit of a way. Yeah, I, yeah, I get that. And I, I mean, for me, like, moving here, too, just on that tangent, if I'm yeah, on yeah, please. <laughs> um, I think it was interesting because I do remember moving here when I was 11 and being like, I remember being in my first social studies class and they were like, Oh, this is the melting pot. And I was like, what, what? Like we've never (laughs) used that term in Korea. Like what's a melting pot. And then they're like, yeah, it's where all these races and ethnicities and cultures come together and becomes this cohesive whole. I'm like, it like blew my mind. Like I remember that. And I thought it was like the coolest thing ever. And I fell in love with America. And, um, you know, I will say in the last couple months or weeks, feels like months, um, just with all of this, uh, you know, resurfacing, I will say I, my heart has been tender because it mm-hmm. almost felt like being um, betrayed by this like lover, you know, mm-hmm. of like this idea of America that I had and felt really saddened. But, um, but you know, I think what comes with that is like, this new appreciation for all the different colors once again. And I think it gives us an opportunity to move forward with more um, optimism towards change. So yeah, just my little two cents on that. No, I think it's it's so important. I hope obviously like 
that's all I think about. I, I feel the same. Like I've been very tender and that's the perfect word, just tender, just tender to this whole thing. And we've all gone through things, even though I grew up in a place where it was heavy migrant, which is what my family was. That does not mean that racism and things like that didn't happen, right? It happened, but it's a different level, obviously. That's what's going on now. And I, I'm happy that in the sense that people get to talk about it and hopefully cause change. Cause I want it to change. Obviously I, I my son is um, black and he, I need it to change because mm -hmm. it's one of those things where like, even before he was adopted, when we were connected with his birth mother, I had already started worrying about it. Cause it, it, when we got connected with him, it was when it was really big because uh, black men were getting pulled over left and right ah. for any. And so I just remember thinking, and I told a friend and they thought I was crazy, but I was like, I'm so scared for him to be 16. He's not even born yet. Mm -hmm. um, because I was so scared that like, what do I do? Like, how do I think? And so, yeah, when all this happened this, you know, February with Ahmaud Arbery and I was just like, I don't know how I can survive thinking like I can never let him leave the house because I, so it was it was intense mm -hmm. but I will say that it has to happen I think for there to be change right yeah. like I think people have to sort of uprise with it so I'm yeah, I'm, like I'm excited for it position that you're in you know you have this child who might be affected by like everything that's going on and like also like having a different experience from a different mm -hmm. perspective and I'm actually curious this is kind of off tangent yeah no go ahead. <laughs> but um, what was that feeling like I can only imagine like when you first adopted your child like I'm curious like yeah. that sounds like such a cool experience and I don't it think was. cool is a right word yeah but. yeah <laughs> it, it was it was it was it's weird because like uh all those like cliche things that you hear of like, your life is different or, you know, you'll love someone more than you'll ever love. Like, it's weird because all of them just become true in like a mm. second. Um, <laughs> it, it's so crazy to think like, uh, you're just, I don't know. It's like, it's scary because it's like, holy fuck, sorry to cast. Um, <laughs> who I'm responsible for this like person. Yeah. And like, that's the thing. You're responsible for an entire person, not just like, can he live and eat? <laughs> You're responsible, like, what that's does he grow up into? Yeah, like, yeah. The whole thing. Everything. <laughs> like, I, I do think, like, I know we all have personalities, but you infuse a lot of stuff into a person, you mm -hmm. know, like, it, good and bad. And so it's like that, I constantly am like, oh, God, what did he pick up for me today? Um, but I love it. I do love it. And I, I, I couldn't ask for anything else. We actually went through an adoption before him mm. um, that uh, it failed. Like 30 minutes before we were supposed to sign paperwork, she backed out. Wow. So it was a horrible, horrible experience. We were with the baby for four days, like in the NICU. Um, so it was like, we named her and all this stuff. <sighs> and it was a horrible experience. So I honestly, like when it, it made Andrew, who's my son, when that happened, it made it so much more um, meaningful or I don't know, it just, it made it, it really heightened it. Cause I do remember that first time I was already like, yeah, you're scary. You have a baby. But this one was so different because I just knew that it was, that wasn't going to happen. Yeah. Um, so it was like, you could let go a little bit more and be mm -hmm. with it a little bit more. So it was, it was life changing. I will tell you that. And I will also say that there's nothing the one thing I, I'm at least proud to do as a parent is to be super honest mm -hmm. <laughs> and be like nothing I swear to god I don't care how many books you read what school you go to there's nothing that will prepare you to be a parent right. and there are times that you I will look at them and I'm sorry for saying this but I'll be like this is a dick that guy's a dick but you know like but I also love him so much yeah. and I think like that's important to be like you know what yeah he's you know my my baby was an asshole today <laughs> but I still feel okay. Like, you know, they, they're yeah. a baby. And I think it's funny. I talk, not to him like that, but to me like that or an adult. Because I also think it makes it funny in the moment. So I also can remind myself, like, he's a baby. Like, what am I doing trying to reason with a baby? Like, uh, right. yeah, he, he doesn't want to go potty. Okay. Yeah, he's not. He's a three-year-old. Like, right. get with yourself. Because you're mm -hmm. going to, you, I would yell at myself 
Yeah. I knew this conversation was happening. So it's like, I just try and keep it real with people. And like, it's so much fun. I don't think there's anything I've ever done in my life that feels as good as this. Um, but I also don't yeah. know how to make people feel prepared for this. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow. I can only imagine. <sighs> um, okay. I'm like, we talked about so many good things already. And I'm like, I didn't even get a story yet. We need your story. But that's what we're here for. Okay. <laughs> So I, first of all, love that you were so loud and then you came here and were quiet, right? I love that. Mm -hmm. I think that's mm -hmm. something a lot of people who have gone through that can relate to. When you, obviously you're so determined if you learned the language plus read that many, I mean, I don't even care if you know the language, read that many books this summer. Um, like that's a lot of stuff to mm -hmm. take on. Yes. <laughs> Where does that come from? Where does that come from? Like that determination that like, I'm going to be this person because that has to yeah. come from something. Yeah. You know, I think there's only two ways that you take massive action. I think Tony Robbins talks about this is um, when you're trying to move away from pain because the pain is so much, so bad that you want to move away from it or that your vision is so big that you want to move towards it. At the time, I can tell you it was the pain. Um, I actually remember specifically what happened, which was um, I remember I was in the bathroom, in the girl's bathroom, and there was kind of like this gross stall and I'm like, opened it, closed the door and walked away kind of thing. And then the, these two girls come in and they do the same thing. They open this door, close it like, ew, you know, we're in seventh grade, so. They said to you. And, um, and I remember they were like, oh, I bet you it was one of those retarded ESL kids. Uh. And I was an ESL kid. And um, I just remember, like, I could understand it, but I couldn't speak, you know, up for myself. And I remember just, like, sitting with that and just being so, like, hurt by it. And then, say, you know, thinking, like, you know what? Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove them wrong. And obviously, you know, mm. this is not the best way to take action, but it made me take action. Um, so I was determined because I wanted to prove them something. Right. Um, yeah. and then, you know, over the years, what I learned is that that's not sometimes the best way to always grow. Um, mm. so, you know, what I really focus on not only for myself and other, you know, my clients and other people is, you know, that's great. You know, th there's going to be a point that you're going to move away from that certain pain, but like, let's take you all the way through and let's create a vision that actually excites you, that pulls you, you know, you know, pulls you to that new level now, because, you know, it's, it's going to only take you to a certain level if you're just trying to move away from pain. And it comes with all these different stories that you heavy, you know, carry heavy with you, right? Like at the time, I actually specifically remember when my mom, brought me here in um, America. She's like, you're a minority. You're going to have to work 200 times um, or 200% uh, you know, harder to be able to be normal, essentially. Mm -hmm. And I remember that. So I literally took that to heart at the time. And so, you know, I got two degrees when everyone else was getting one and all these things, like all these little things. And then over time, what happened is I looked back and I said, wow, I've been overachieving. I've been literally doing twice as much as compared to everybody else in all aspects of my life. And then, you know, I noticed that it became kind of like this perfectionism thing, right? So the last couple of years, it's actually been my um, transformation towards shedding all of those things, you know, shedding wow. those stories, shedding those stories that I'm only going to be enough when I do 200% of everyone else and just being like, I'm enough right now. I'm powerful right now. I'm perfect right now. And I can do more if I wanted to just because it aligns with my vision. So yeah, I, I hope that answered your question. And, um, and I, you know, I think that's one of the things I see often in my own clients is like these people who are trying to move away from that, like whatever that thing was for them, you know, trying to move away from that pain. And then once they get there, they're either exhausted or they have no longer any energy to move past that because they're like, well, now I'm not, pa I'm not in pain, but then where do I go from here? And that's what happened to me, you know, after I was able to, you know, get good grades and all this stuff. And I cleared the plate and I, I felt equal. I'm like, okay, but now what, what am yeah. I really about? And no one ever like questioned that for me because it looked like at the velocity I was going, I was doing well, but like, you know, I didn't ever sit down and say like, where am I going and why am I going there besides this idea of moving away from pain? So yeah. And you, so you got those two degrees, right? Psychology and marketing mm -hmm. or business marketing. What did you do after? 
Like, okay, I got my degrees. Where did you go from there? Yeah. And I think this is really where I plateaued. And, you know, right after I graduated top of the class, all this stuff. And then I was like, I literally don't know what I want to do with this. Um, I went and got a sales job at a bank. Hated it. Hated it. Hated it. Um, <laughs> and then I moved around a few other, you know, jobs. And, you know, for four and a half of those years, I worked at an art college and I was a admissions counselor, which was really cool because it was essentially I admissions poetry. Person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we I'm like, that. are we, we're so similar. It's I, know, I know. <laughs> I mean, it's a similar, and we learned a lot from that, you know, that mm-hmm. experience. I'm sure you did too. And, uh, and then after that, I was in different um, sales jobs and I just hopped around and I was pretty good at it, but after a while, I just felt like, I don't know, like, I don't know where to go from here. It didn't feel like it was fulfilling. And um, yeah. And when did you make the leap into like, I'm going to do all of these things that I want to do now? Yeah, so it's actually um, a rather, it was a distinct point. So um, my stepdad, who I called dad, he was diagnosed with cancer in 2017. Mm -hmm. And he suffered cancer for two and a half years and he passed away. And after he passed away, or I'm sorry, he was diagnosed 2015. He passed away in 2017. And after he passed away, I had this like moment, like he was the first one that passed away that was like really close to me. Mm. Um, And I remember like seeing the distinction between body and soul for the first time, like, whoa, his body is here, but he's not here. Mm what does that mean? Then what, what am I really, what am I outside of my own body? And oh my gosh, like I'm going to die one day. And that became really real to me for the first time. And then I just really started questioning, like when I have that separation of body and soul, like what do I want to have done? Like, what am I really here for? So I really started questioning all of it. So, um, a few months after he passed away, um, I quit my corporate job. It was probably one of the scariest things. Even that, honestly, I think it was scarier than the skydiving thing I did. (laughs) Honestly, (laughs) taking that leap was actually way scarier. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I just decided to go on this journey. And I knew deep down, I always wanted to be a coach. Like I've always been passionate about positive psychology and, you know, just helping people and all that. And though, um, after I quit, I started just experimenting, you know, trying on all these different identities. You know, I was mm. an artist, so I started painting um, and I started selling art and being featured in all these like art shows and like world of dance and all these random places. I was all of a sudden I went from corporate to like in two months, like this artist. So I was selling art and going to all these shows and doing, you know, live art painting. It was so random. And then um, I also started a yoga fit apparel line um, with my friend at the time. So I um, did that for a while. And like, still, like I knew like, okay, I still got to do what I'm really passionate about. And so then that's when I started really um, building my coaching business and, you know, getting trained and all that stuff. So. Wow. And how has it been for you? Um, being a coach? Mm-hmm. Um, it's been all the things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been all the things. I mean, I remember in the beginning, leaving corporate, I thought I wanted freedom and I do. And I did, but going from like having someone tell you what to do for eight to nine hours a day, every day to going from no one telling you to do anything ever. It was actually like really stressful. I'm Mm. like, I I don't know what to do with myself. And I don't know. I don't feel okay when I'm not doing anything, you know, like I I call myself a recovering type A. (laughs) So Mm. I was like, I feel like I should be doing something. Um, so in the beginning, it was really hard. There were so many, so many limiting beliefs that I had to break through. Like so many, like, oof, I remember literally just some of the days, like after some of my coaching calls, I would just break down. Like I had to like relearn who I was because mm-hmm. I was like a little fish in this fishing, you know, whatever fishbowl. And then being in the ocean out of it, I was lost. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then over time, um, obviously, you know, and then there's definitely rewards as well. But now what I feel is just a lot of fulfillment. Like I love what I get to do. I'm just so grateful that I get to do what I love doing. I like, there's nothing like getting off, um, a phone call with one of my clients and be like, wow, like, wow. You know, I got to, I got to, you know, help them break through, help them break through. And, um, 
Yeah, I love what I get to do. So it's been all the things though. So, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen that chart because like success looks like this. It's like, you know, oh, big, yeah, big yeah. line. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I felt all the, all the emotions along the way. And what is coming up for you? Yeah. So from here and on, um, so I have a, a book that I've been working on for the last like year and I've actually always wanted to be a writer, even since I was very, very young. Um, my first book is going to be called creating your own happiness. So right now I'm in the very last stages of picking the cover and all this good stuff. And it's a self-help book and really helping people, um, see that the final destination isn't like, you know, a thing. It's not a car. It's not a job. It's not money. It's not success as people know it, but the final destination is just your best self. Mm. And along that journey from where you are and where, uh, you know, your best self along that journey, any part of that journey, you can access happiness. Um, and so I give people very, you know, various ideas to try on during that journey. Like what does freedom look like? What does, um, you know, connection look like? What, you know, all these different ideas to help them realize like there's actually so much magic every step of the way to getting to that best self. Wow. I'm yeah. excited, honestly, like so excited to be able to read that. Thank you. I'm excited. Yeah. For you. I, I mean, again, you know, I've never adopted a baby or had a baby, but this feels like the closest thing I can compare. Oh, uh, I'm, <laughs> sure like I'm, I'm sure it is. I'm birthing this book. <laughs> I mean, so. like, I, I, um, I went to school originally for uh, music oh, cool. and English because I just, like you, when I was little, I um, just like to be, I wanted to be a out there you know what I mean like I, I I wanted to try everything and then I thought oh I know what I need to do I need for some reason I thought I was going to be like a singer and like write music um <laughs> <laughs> and so like I wanted to do that and then eventually I ended up growing um uh business management and marketing and then I did like heavy focus on like uh consumer psychology and uh like similar right like psychology and how we use it in the um, business and retail space um but now like sort of your same journey I am like cool I need to be accepting of all of these things and the minute that happens like it, it just everything changes just like the minute you did it and art just happened right like it, like I could just the minute you said that I was like god I, I wish we could like play this in like an art school <laughs> and oh, just have all yeah. these like str <laughs> like struggling yeah. honestly like I've been waiting for like a year to get a show and right. <laughs> Yuri just shows up and there's just a show but it's like it's those things like when you follow like this passion and if you are lucky enough to have many I just think it never cannot happen it always happens mm -hmm. I just think it won't not happen you know what I mean um and so I the minute I left I left uh corporate I was like with recruiting and uh, marketing and PR for a, over a decade wow. and then when I left I went into um real estate like home then I went to design and then now I'm here which is like coaching consulting similar um but the minute I left I started writing again and I was like in every blog like HuffPost and you know there's like really great things and I started to do it again now yeah. um but you writing the book that's why I'm so excited about it like I have I have stuff but I cannot put myself to like piece it all together you know what I mean like yeah. it's there but it's like ooh. so I'm excited to see what yours is like I am excited to us even not on the show talk more about how that process is because that is I'm I just love anything that is artistic in any way I mm -hmm. personally think like that form of expression and communication is the way that the world should work yeah um and so uh, yeah it's like that you did it and that you went after it it's there's nothing better that you could do so Thank you. Yeah, I'm yes. super excited. And um, yeah, I mean, it. the reason it took me so long is because I had the book ready for a while, but there's some stories in there that I don't, I have never shared until I put it down on a piece of paper. I, I have mm. stories there that I've never put down on a piece of paper until then. So putting that out there and I was like, whoa, how do I integrate all of this into one person? So then I slowly started talking about those stories and then like, it was like, I would put the story out and be like, oh, am I still, am I still loved? Am I still okay? And then, <laughs> another story. and then, you know, over time, I'm like, 
wow, like all those judgments I had on myself about what this is going to do to me. Mm-hmm. None of that happened. If, it, if, and if anything, like people appreciate the rawness. And if they don't, I'm realizing also that's not my judgment anymore. That's their, yeah. their yeah. spiritual homework to work on. Mm-hmm. So Good. yeah, it's, it's, um, I think someone, I forget who said this, but someone said, someone wise said, um, but everyone see. should write a book, even if you never publish it. And I think it's so true because it like really teaches you about what you are really about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm so excited. Before we go, I have one more question, but before we even get into that, tell us how to get a hold of you. How are we supposed to follow you? I know people want to. How should yeah. we? <laughs> Yeah, of course. Um, and first of all, thank you so much for having oh, me. Yeah. I'm just super, um, you know, grateful that we got to meet first of all, and that <laughs> you know, we got to be here. Um, and you can follow me on, you know, various different ways. Uh, Facebook, you can follow me on facebook.com forward slash Yuri Choi Coach, or Instagram, it's Yuri One Number One C, or um, you can also find me on my website at YuriChoiCoaching.com. So any of those would work. And yeah, please, please reach out to me. I would love to meet any of you guys. And on top of that, what services or are there services that you're offering that people can reach out to you for? Yes. So the, you know, um, the main thing is, you know, coaching. So if Mm -hmm. you you guys feel like there's things shifting in your life or business and you want more clarity or you feel like everything's going well, but there's like this deep emptiness inside and you don't know how to address that, um, I'm the person and feel free to reach out. I usually, you know, offer some kind of, you know, like a complimentary session to see if we're compatible and, um, we go from there. So yeah. It's good. I've been on your site, I think even before we connected, um, when Eric sort of, or right after Eric introduced us and it's so, it's good. It's real good. Like that, the site is real good of like, (laughs) you're really targeting that person. And I'm like, dude, I I wish I had this like a couple of years ago, because I would have (laughs) easily been like calling. Um, so that is really good. It's really good. So, okay. So final question. I like yeah. a, I like a circle. I like a, connecting the dots. Um, so we, we started off with you telling us a little bit about like little Yuri. Mm-hmm. Um, and I want to know if she were here today, mm-hmm. what you would tell her, what you'd want to talk to her about. Hmm. I would tell her that she's loved and that, and to never never lose yourself, never lose that creativity and that spark and the passion and the joy and the you know, magic of life, because I'm just, I'm you, I'm just a little bit bigger, <laughs> you know? And so let's hold on to that, like together for as long as we can. And, yeah. um, you know, I, I have the secret mission to give people permission to be their inner children. And I think the best way to do that, to give them the permission that they're seeking, even though it's within themselves, is to be it myself, to be, you know, that expressive, expressive inner child first so that people are like, oh, that's okay too. So, yeah. That's awesome. I love that. Yuri, thank you so much for taking the time and coming here. Yeah, thank you, and sharing. Paul. I've had an amazing, amazing time. Yeah, it's always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. Yeah, so you guys, we will be back next Wednesday. So we will see you then. Bye, everybody.